Hi Bold Bakers. Breakfast pastries are very near and dear to my heart. So much so I actually started a catering business just for breakfast. I'm gonna make sticky buns today. It was a huge fan favorite for my business and I know you're gonna love it too. So let's get baking. So you probably guessed it by now, but yes, the sticky bun dough is a no-knead dough because I love no-knead doughs. You don't need a machine, you mix it all by hand in one big bowl, it's fantastic. So we're gonna start out in a nice large bowl and the reason you want to start in a large bowl is because we're also going to mix and proof it in the same bowl. So we need to give lots of nice room to move, so large bowl. So into your bowl, add in your flour, salt on one side of the bowl, and then dried yeast on the other side of the bowl. And now they can be mixed all together. You cannot add one directly on top of the other or it will deactivate, but mixing them on to either sides and then mixing them all together is totally fine. So these are our dry ingredients. We're just gonna set them aside and then we're gonna to mix together our wet ingredients. Into your jug, add in some milk, honey. You can also use agave or maple syrup. Obviously maple syrup will work really well in these breakfast pastries and butter. So now I'm gonna pop this mix into the microwave and I just want to heat it up for a few seconds for the butter to melt and for the milk to become nice and warm, but not hot. So my mix is out of the microwave. and I'm just gonna put my finger in there to see that it is at room temperature or blood temperature. So you want it nice and warm. You don't want it too hot. This will help the yeast grow because it likes warmth. Now into this mix, we're going to add in our eggs and we're gonna whisk them in one at a time room temperature eggs so they're not too cold also going into your mix. Okay, our eggs are mixed in. This is our wet, now it's time to add it into our dry ingredients. So just pour all your wet ingredients all over the top of the flour. Now, like I said, this is a no knead dough and what that means is there is no need for a machine. You mix it all by hand. You mix it until all the flour is hydrated and a dough starts to form. The reason that we can get away with not using a machine, and I've said this a lot in my other dough videos, is that because we're going to ferment it for a few hours and that develops the gluten. So we don't need a machine. Time is going to be our machine. Now every flour is different, so if you feel like your mix is dry and not coming together, then add a little bit more milk. Just be careful not to add too much. You'll know when your dough is mixed together because all of your flour is wet and you got yourself a nice dough. This dough is going to be an enriched dough because it's got eggs, butter, honey. Doughs like this have really good flavor and texture. So that's it, that's our dough. It took a few minutes to mix, no trouble at all. So now we're gonna cover it in tin foil or cling film. Make it nice and warm. Make sure that's nice and tight. And then lay a towel over it. Now this is where the magic happens. This dough, unlike my other doughs, I usually ferment for around 18 hours, up to 24 hours, but this little guy actually only takes around four hours. So you can whip it up in a morning and by brunch time, you'll be eating your cinnamon rolls. So we're just gonna set him aside. He's nice and snug under his blanket and we're gonna watch him rise. So while our dough is proofing, we're gonna take this time to make the filling for our sticky buns. So in a bowl, we're going to add in some butter. So I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave for a few seconds until it's melted. So once your butter is melted, we're going to add in some nice brown sugar. Brown sugar is so great for baking because it has kind of a molasses-y caramel flavor. I know brown sugar isn't available in all countries, so if you can't find it, feel free to use white sugar. Next up is ground cinnamon. Now this is an essential flavor in sticky buns. It makes it really warm and kind of like that from scratch homemade kind of pastry, which is what we're going for. Add in some salt bring out all the flavors of our cinnamon and our sugar, and then some honey. Look at that, runny honey. Once your honey is in there, then just take a spatula and mix it all together. Feel free to make this filling in advance and it will live happily in your fridge for up to three to four days. Okay, so it's all mixed up. I'm gonna set that guy aside. He will stiffen up a little bit as he cools down and we're just gonna go and check on our dough as it proofs. So as the saying goes, here's one I prepared earlier. I made this dough early this morning because I wanted to be ready in time for shooting. So let me just give you a little sneaky peeky of what this looks like. So this guy looks great, he is nice and risen. You can tell he's a happy dough, he's all bubbly and come to life, this is perfect. Now if you don't want to use your dough straight away, that is totally fine. You can pop him in the fridge for up to three days and he will live happily in there. Now just flour your work surface and turn out your dough. And now we're just gonna roll this guy out until he's an eighth of an inch thick. Do this slowly, take your time. Try and get him to a nice rectangle, but trust me, mine never usually are in a rectangle. They're always a funny shape. 
So our dough is rolled out, he's looking great. Now just so you know, the measurements, the recipe, everything can be found on my website, biggerbolderbaking.com. So follow along the instructions there as well. So this is time now for our filling that we made earlier. So all you want to do is actually just add half of your filling onto your dough because we are reserving the rest of the half to be used later. So with your spatula, just spread out your filling as evenly as you can. Now remember, don't bring the filling all the way to the edge, leave a little bit of dough. So don't worry, if you're thinking this is a lot of filling, it's not. The more the merrier for these guys. Okay, perfect. That's it, that's our filling. So now our next step is to roll up our sticky buns. So for the rolling, go along the long edge and then just tightly roll up the dough. And what I mean by that is make sure that there's not big bubbles, kind of roll and pull the dough a little bit so you're not ending up with holes in the middle. Okay, so that's it. That's our dough all rolled and lovely. So now that our dough is rolled, it's time to cut our sticky buns. So you're gonna take a serrated knife, something with a nice sharp edge, and we're gonna cut our rolls around two and a half inches. Right there, you have your first sticky bun. It's important to use a serrated knife, something with a sharp edge, so you get a lovely cut on your bun. If you're making breakfast or brunch for a party, you can always make your dough the day before, even cut them to this stage, put them into their tin, and then the next morning, take them out, proof them, and then bake them off. You can get them all ready to go just to be baked. So our sticky buns are cut, so it's time for them to go into our tin. Now, for the tin, make sure it's a nice, good quality, thick one because they will bake so much better. Also, don't use a cheesecake tin or a springform tin because your caramel can ooze out the bottom and it's gonna make a mess of your oven. With the rest of the sticky bun filling, add it into your tin. And we're essentially going to just butter our tin with this filling. This caramel is going to bake into your sticky buns and almost make them like self-saucing. It's absolutely going to be delicious. So for my sticky buns, I love pecans because they give lovely texture and they have a lovely caramel coffee kind of flavor. So here I have some untoasted pecans and you can just throw them in to the bottom of your dish. Once your tin is prepared just like this, you can start to add in your sticky buns. So you can't say that this is not a thing of beauty. Just look at how fantastic that looks. So these guys need to proof to let them grow and get nice and light and fluffy. If you don't want to bake these off straight away, just like I said, you can pop them in the fridge overnight and then proof them the next day. But I am going to cover these up now with some tin foil or cling wrap, a little towel, and I'm going to let them proof at room temperature for around 45 minutes to an hour. It depends on how warm your kitchen is, but we're going to come back and check on them. So my sticky buns have been proofing and I want to show you what yours should look like before they go into the oven. As you can see, they've risen up and they've also grown into each other. So they've taken up all the space of the tin. And if you touch them, they are really soft, full of bubbles. This is exactly what we want before we go into the oven. Place your sticky buns on a baking tray and bake them in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius until they're beautifully golden brown. Our timer has gone off, which means it's time to check on our sticky buns. These sticky buns smell amazing and they're perfectly golden brown all over, which is exactly what you want to make sure that the dough is properly cooked. When your sticky buns are out of the oven, it's a good idea to let them rest for five minutes just so the caramel can solidify a little bit and they firm up. Then once it has rested, we are going to take our serving platter, whatever you like, lay it on top of your sticky buns, then very carefully flip them over. Give it a little shake out of your tray to make sure it comes out and voila. This looks amazing. Look how beautiful that is. It grew up, it's lovely and soft. I can feel it, I can smell the warm caramel and pecans. So this is my favorite part, probably the part I'm best at, the eating. Now I just want you to see why it is worth to go to all of this trouble. Check out that dough. Do you see that lovely texture and how it's a little bit flaky? It is rich and buttery, full of flavor. Mm. I just went straight for the caramel. There's no point in messing around. These are incredible. You saw them, I don't need to tell you that. Definitely try and make these. They are not difficult and they are absolutely delicious. Keep all of your great photos coming on my website and across social media. And I'll see you back here next week for more bigger, bolder baking. This is just another great way to enjoy us more.